Hello Facebook, Dave Thompson here at the Inspirational Book Writers Retreat. Day number, what is it, four here on the island. Uh, and coming to you from the top deck. So I just want to show you what's happening behind. We're in golden hour and it is spectacular. The northerly started to come in. It's actually starting to look like a spring day here, which is pretty spectacular. Let me see if I can flick the camera over just while we wait for some people to jump on. Check out how beautiful it is here. Hello to everyone joining. Welcome. Welcome to the book writing island. So absolutely magnificent uh, here at Stratty today. And what I want to share with you is, uh, is book writing breakthroughs and the inner world of, of book writing uh, and really what it takes to navigate that journey because I mean we've done this five years now we've done over 75 books uh, this is our 17th inspirational book writers retreat and I've seen every type of breakdown and breakthrough I think I think you can see I'm, I mean I'm sure there's more for me to see but I've seen lots and what I want to share with you is some of the insights from that so um, First of all, let me say that when you go to write a book, I think it's inevitable at some point that you will hit a sticking point. Hello to everyone jumping on. Uh, can you just give me a yes if you can hear me okay? I know it's just a little bit windy, the northerlies come up. Can you just like tip, hit like or just go, yes, I can hear you, Dave. Um, just want to make sure I'm not coming through all scratchy. Oh, hi, Heather from inside. <laughs> Heather's literally right there and she's, she can hear me okay. So, thank you guys. Yep, it seems people can hear me. Awesome. Thank you, Brett. So, first thing to acknowledge, I think, is that when you're writing a book, you will hit some sticky points. You may hit many sticky points. And the reason for that is that It can be a vulnerable thing to write a book and you are exposing yourself. You are being seen, right? You are being seen. You are putting yourself out there in a way for the whole world to see. You know, your book's going on Amazon. There's 450 million, you know, credit cards on file there, right? So that's the first thing to acknowledge. If you don't recognize that this is a task of being seen and stepping up as a leader and going out there in the world then if you don't know that that's what you're dealing with, then fear can have you hiding in your cave really, really quickly. So the first thing to say, to ask yourself is, am I ready to step up as a leader to claim my stake in the ground and to, to be a leader in my space, in my niche, in my market? And if you are ready for that, then the next question is, are you ready to be seen as that, to be recognized as that? Yeah, Um, because that can bring up all sorts of insecurities and emotions that can bring up, you know, I've seen people, I mean, fear is a common one. Judgment, hello to everyone jumping on. Judgment is a common one, is a huge one. Judgment in the sense of I'm, who am I to write this book? I've heard that one about 75 million times, Uh, you know, not feeling that there's worth in what you've got to say. It's being like, oh, I've got some good stuff, but then you go to write, it's like, oh, my stuff's shit. So the inner critic really comes up. Yeah, Heather Heather says inner critic is huge. Um, And I see people battle with this. I see people. They talk to me on the phone, and often that's what they want is reassurance that we will handle the inner critic. Because if your inner critic's going mental, it's pretty hard to do anything, yeah? So there's that, I mean, the fears and trepidations of school of like finishing an assignment. So think about uh, how you would feel back in school in terms of completing things. So there's an element of, do you have any triggers around completion? Because if you do, they're going to come up when you're writing a book, especially if you come with us on Book Retreat, because we do a book in a week. You know, we're not for everyone. I'll be very clear, like we are not for everyone. But for kind of ambitious, go-getter, kind of dynamic people, 
we are absolutely the place to be because that's how we rock out. Uh, so, yeah, I've seen fear play out. I've seen judgment play out. I've seen like the anxiety of finishing, of completion play out. Uh, I've seen people have to face old wounds and old traumas. So, hey, Glenn Munso. Uh, Glenn joined us on the October 2016 book retreat, wrote an excellent book, Drugs Do Not Discriminate. Check him out, guys. Very, very good book. I've seen people have to face old traumas. So, what I'm talking about there is if you're writing about a story that you haven't fully healed yet, you're probably going to have to heal it before you write about it. Because otherwise, I would say what you're doing is you're overreaching. You're reaching too far. You're trying to write a book for a place that's actually maybe further down the track than where you are right now. Um, and if you, are, if you are writing your book and you find this sticky point where you actually can't proceed in writing the book until you heal the trauma, well, or whatever it is, you know, it might be a limiting belief or it, whatever it happens to be, uh, that's really where you need support. So if you get the support instantaneously, which is what happens here on Book Retreat, we've got highly skilled, highly trained, experienced coaches uh, and practitioners as crew on the island to help you instantly move through something. So, for example, this morning we had one of our book writers uh, who's writing about quite a traumatic experience in her life and pulling out some really powerful lessons uh, to share around self-leadership uh, in her book. And she hit a bit of a sticky point and to her credit, she lent in and in that moment, like in the space of 30 minutes, we had a conversation and she broke through and let go of the past and then she, it just, it, like it all dropped in. So she let go of the thing, the lessons came in, boom, there's a chapter. Now, what she said to me afterwards was if she'd been at home by herself, that particular sticky point probably would have made her put down the entire project of writing the book because the stuff that was coming up for her was like, I'm, who, who am I to write this book? I haven't even sorted out my own shit. You know, how many people have said that? Um, and I think that's a common misbelief as well. Like people think, oh, uh, you've got to have your shit sorted in order to write a book. It's like, well, does any human really have their shit completely sorted? I mean, no one does. We're all human here. Uh, and you, you don't have to be perfect to write a book. You don't have to have all your ducks in a row. Uh, if you've got if you've got knowledge or expertise on a particular topic uh, that, that will benefit others, yeah, imposter syndrome, says Heather Joy Bassett. Hey, Ben Reeves. Uh, imposter syndrome is a huge, huge thing. It's a massive concern. It's a huge reason why people don't put themselves out there. And what I, what I think it is, is it is a failure to, hey, Ben Reeves, guys, Benjamin Reeves was an absolute stalwart of the Inspirational Book Writers Program. He's been instrumental in helping, uh, uh, what, pro over 80% of our book writers, Benjamin Reeves was a direct contributor, so big kudos to Ben Reeves. Uh, thank you, my brother. Hey, Matt Kelly. Matt Kelly is also a good friend of mine, book writer. So imposter syndrome, what I think this is, and you'll love this, Heather, is I think Imposter syndrome is a, uh, a failure to see your own brilliance. Because if you were seeing your own brilliance, you would realize and own that you have something to offer. Yeah? And it's the people that aren't recognizing their own value that go, oh, I'm an imposter. Okay? So recognizing your own value, huge, huge piece. So... If you've had, I mean, often what happens with book writing is when you complete the challenge, when you actually get to the end of the journey and you publish a book, uh, what happens is you often get massive self-worth upgrades, self-confidence upgrades. Um, and if we want to get all squishy for a minute, real self-love 
upgrades because it's like I, I loved myself enough, I valued myself enough, I decided that what I've got to share is valuable and I am, I am a leader worthy of taking the stage to cast my message out to the world. And it's these types of realizations that when you have them, put you in a really powerful position to write a book. And what I would say is that sometimes you need the support to make that happen. So if I was to give you three points to really summarize uh, what we're saying here around how to navigate the inner world of book writing. Because let's face it, if you don't navigate the inner world, you're probably not going to get it done. You're just probably not. Um, you're just probably not. It's a critical part of the journey. Uh,